What's going on my broskies? My name is Totski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. So the treasure map hasn't even started yet for Treasure Map Jinbei for the anniversary of course. We all know that it's coming. I've made a couple of videos about it already. Go check out the YouTube channel if you want some information about some free to play teams or even my personal teams that I'm going to be using for the upcoming treasure map. Make sure to check that out. But we already have a data download for what's coming after the treasure map. So this is going to be dropping first. I believe it's the 19th. Yeah, the 19th of March at 1900 PST time. This is going to be dropping. It's a Kazuna Clash class pickup Sugo Fest. Now, you can see there's a brand new character right in the center of that banner, which is a brand new Sengoku, which we'll be going through that in today's video. But there's also another banner that's dropping straight after it, the Pirate Rumble Sugo Fest, introducing two brand new characters. You've got the Leo and just the Tontata characters, and then you've got a Frankie unit. Um, and this is going to be dropping on March 20th at 1900 PST time. So the day after the Kazuna Clash banner. So in this video today, I want to break down both of these banners, talk about whether or not it's worth pulling, and also just talk about the new characters and see what they do, because there's a couple of these characters here, especially the Pirate Rumble units. I don't actually know what they even do in Pirate Rumble, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do, right? So let's jump into it. First of all, let's have a look at the Kizuna Clash banner, which is going to be dropping first. Now, this obviously does fully confirm that the next Kizuna Clash unit is going to be a dual unit of Borsalino and Sakazuki, and that unit is pretty good. It's one of those Kizuna units that Will take many many months to max out i don't really like it when they do that because you know by the time you get the unit maxed you know you, you might not even be using that unit that often but you know either way the unit is actually still pretty decent but let's have a look at the steps so of course you have your discounted multi on the number one which is going to be 30 rainbow gems the second multi is guaranteed to be a kizuna clash sugo fest character pretty good because, um, you know, obviously those units that are only limited to Kizuna banners. So obviously on the banner here, you can see you've got the Monet, you've got the... I mean, the Marco isn't a Kizuna only banner. That that Marco, I believe, is a limited rare recruit. I'm not really too sure about that. But then you've got Sengoku, and then you've got the Yasop and the Beckman from the Halloween celebration, who uh, those characters in particular are Kizuna Clash only characters. So you're guaranteed to get one of them or even have a shot at Sengoku here. The third multi is a guaranteed legend. The fourth multi is a one gem multi. And then you've got the fifth multi being guaranteed to get that Sengoku. And if you do go past five multis for whatever reason, you get uh, pretty similar steps. A legend or a rate boost, a special character. So yeah, that I guess can include the limited rare recruits, which are going to be on the banner because Marco is on that banner artwork there. Uh, one gem multi on multi eight, another legend or a rate boost on multi nine, and another legend on multi ten. We don't know what legends are going to be boosted at the moment. If we go to the recommended characters, does it actually show? No, it doesn't show any legends. Yeah, so we, we can't really see what legends are going to be boosted. But of course, it is going to be a class pickup Sugo Fest, so only three classes are going to be boosted. I assume the 10 legends that they pick are going to be of those classes. So, um, okay, that makes sense. It's whatever. So let's go ahead and have a talk about Sengoku. I mean, just looking at the steps so far, it doesn't seem that enticing, but let's see what the Sengoku actually does, right? So Sengoku is a fighter cerebral, and he's a strength unit. So uh, that would mean that obviously the class pickup, one of the classes has to be fighter and cerebral. I, I guess cerebral would be one because... Um, the Halloween units, I believe, are Cerebral. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure they're both... Oh, the, like the, the, the Yasop and the Beckman, I believe, are Cerebral units. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, let's have a look at what he does, though. So the Sengoku, his captain effect, is going to reduce the charge time by two turns at the start of the quest. Fighter and Cerebral get three times attack, 1.2 HP. Not a very enticing captain effect there. His special on the 13-turn cooldown will reduce your crew's bind and special bind and attack down duration by six turns. Uh, that's pretty impressive. Changes block orbs and unfavorable slots, so badly matching slots as well, into matching. And if your captain is either fighter or cerebral, you boost fighter and cerebral characters slot effects. So it's a 2.25 times orb boost for one turn, so long as your captain is one of those classes. That's actually really good. That is a fantastic special ability. The only real problem is, um, yeah, this is one of those units that does not have a crewmate ability that reduces special bind. So you have to be in a situation where, you know... He's the only unit on the team that doesn't get special binded, so you can use him to unspecial bind your characters, which doesn't happen too often. Most of the time when you get special binded, it's typically your entire team. So it, it's so strange that they even make a character like this in the first place. Very, very bizarre. But even outside of that, you're still reducing six turns of bind and six turns of attack down. You get orb manipulation and you get an orb boost. Still a really good unit overall, honestly, in my eyes. As for his crewmate abilities, obviously he doesn't get rid of the special bind, which is a bit of a missed opportunity there, but he still gives your fighter and cerebral an attack boost. He also makes 
his own decks and quick slots beneficial. So he's boosted in the Kizuna, so there you go. In the Kizuna, you get 1.5 times tickets, 2 times stats, 15 turn cooldown reduction, and super effective against all types. And during the Kizuna Clash, he has a captain ability of being minus 2 cooldown at the start, and a 5 times captain to fighter and cerebral. Holy... Okay, so yeah, he's going to be pretty good in the Kazuna Clash, quite obviously. Actually, does he get more HP? Yeah, he does. So you can see with his normal captain effect, it's 1.2 HP. And in the boosted, it says 1.25. Why even give him the extra 0.05? I don't, I, it doesn't make sense to me, but whatever, dude. Anyways, uh, he, with his um, potential abilities, he has fear resistance by five. So you know what? This unit would be so insane if one of his crewmate abilities was actually special bind removal on himself. Because he would have had fear reduction as well. Oh my god, why? And why did they do that? They literally like set this unit up in such a way for him to be a perfect unit to have fear resistance and he doesn't have it. I, I, don't, I don't understand. I just don't get it. Am I missing something? Is there a character that, you know, is supposed to remove special bond of a one character that completely resisted or something? I, I, I don't understand. You can't even use Legend Garp support with this guy to remove special bond off himself to then unspecial bond your other characters. I don't know, man. I don't know. This is kind of sus. I don't know. I don't get it. Um, he does have critical hit as well, which critical hit, you know, for, for a regular unit like this is whatever, but it's 80%. 80% is not too bad for 7% extra. Okay. Um, and his support effect is not good. It's just 7% attack and HP, which again, another missed opportunity there. And he does not have any rumble abilities either, but man, this unit was so close to being one of the best limited rare recruits in the entire game, dude. That's insane. Um, so yeah, he's okay. I don't know you'll, if you'll ever use him outside of Kazuna Clash or all that much, but yeah, he's not terrible. He could be worse, but he's definitely not as good as what he could be. So that's the Kizuna Clash banner. Overall, is it worth pulling? Well, look, the 30 gem multi, and then you got a guaranteed Kizuna unit on multi too, which the Kizuna Clash unit, you could just get one of these Halloween units, which are okay. They're not too bad. They've got decent supports. One of the big problems with those Halloween units on the side, though, is that they support um, Shanks, and the problem is you can't use them with the Shanks crew unit because the Shanks crew unit has Beckman, Yasop, and Lucky Roo in that same character. So you can't even use these guys on support on Shanks crew, which is actually a huge missed opportunity. So that's a little bit of an annoyance, but um, overall, I don't think this is worth pulling. This is a banner that you can definitely avoid, and if you've pulled on the Anniversary Sugo Fest, you should be able to get through this Kizuna Clash without too many hassles. So I definitely think you can avoid this one. Moving on though, we've got the Pirate Rumble Sugo Fest. So let's go ahead and break this one down, see what we get. The first multi is at 30 gems, nothing new there. Number two is a Sugo Fest exclusive or a rate boosted character. Yeah, that's not a good start. Um, I would have definitely preferred, you know, Multi-2 to be a guaranteed Rumble unit, but no, they've just jumped into that terrible step. They've been doing that a lot recently where it's like, you know, you can get a Legend or you can get a Rate-boosted character. And I mean, the chances for you to get a Legend on that like 11th poster is not very good. Um, so I'm not really a big fan of those steps at all. Multi-3 is a Legend. Like, the thing about it is, is no one is pulling on Rumble Sugo Fests for the legends i mean like the legends there are nice it's an added bonus but people are only investing their gems into these banners to get these rumble units and the fact that people are doing three multis deep and they still haven't even gotten a guaranteed rumble unit yet i mean yeah if you're doing three multis the chance of you getting a rumble unit is pretty high but still there's no guaranteed rumble unit in the first th in the first three multis now look we haven't got the full details yet you know the first multi might be a guaranteed rumble unit and it just doesn't say it here because that has happened sometimes but just saying, this is a bit sus. Multi 4 is again a 1 gem multi, which is fine. It's basically a free multi. And then multi 5 says a new Pirate Rumble Sugo Fest exclusive only character. So that means you're guaranteed to get one of the new Rumble units. So it's going to be either the Tontadas or it's going to be Frankie. Um, so I haven't read what they do yet, but they better be some of the best Rumble units in the game to make the banner this crap, honestly. This is a very bad Rumble banner comparing to some of the other stuff that we've had. Six is uh, Pirate Rumble. See, look, why is that here? What, like, that multi six should be multi two, like, for sure. That is dumb, dude. And then again, multi seven is another new Rumble character, uh, one gem multi, and then a legend on multi nine. Dude, this is so weird. I don't like this at all, man. They really are trying to get you to pull as much as possible on this banner. The first, like, few steps are just not good. This is not a good banner. I just have to say it, man. Let's have a look and see what they do. And as I said, these better be the, some of the best Rumble units we've seen because that is not an impressive-looking banner. So, let's see what they do in regular content. Quick Strike of Free Spirit. Terrible Captain. Uh, bind and Despair by three and heals for three turns. Yeah, not very good. Stat boost. Okay, yeah, that's nothing amazing. Um... Let's have a look at the Rumble abilities, which is obviously the most important. So he's got a 30 second CT, he's a debuffer, and it says, targets all enemies for 60% chance to apply paralysis for 23 seconds. 60% chance to apply paralysis? It does target all enemies, but 60%? 
that's not great. Paralysis is not an amazing debuff um, in this in, in Pirate Rumble, honestly. It's fine, but nothing too good. And then targets one enemy with high defense for defense down level 10. Okay, that's okay, but it only targets one. It would have been nice if it was like a range, like a medium range or something like that. Only targeting one enemy is a little bit of a missed opportunity. And then targets high attack teammate for level 7 attack up. So he does three different things. Chance for paralysis to all enemies. One enemy gets defense down. And then one of your teammates... Yeah, one of your teammates gets an attack up level 7. I don't like this at all, man. This is not a useful unit. And this unit's quick, right? Yeah, okay, so he's passive. Quick teammates get level 5 HP and level 5 crit percent. I mean, that's a pretty good passive. I'm okay with that passive. But that, that rumble special is just not good enough. Like, why would you waste a spot on your crew for a unit like this when there are so many other better units to use in the game? Definitely do not like this at all. He does completely avoid special bind, which is okay. But yeah, like, I don't know. This doesn't seem like a unit that you're going to use that much. I don't, I don't see the use in this unit. Maybe I'm missing something here, but this unit just doesn't seem that good. There's like a bunch of other units I would rather use over someone like this. One thing to note though is they do have the two damage reduction potential abilities which does mean they are easier to rainbow so that is something but still not a unit that you're going to use too often especially because quick aren't like super powerful in rumble right now and then speaking of characters that are not super powerful it's the dex team which frankie is also dex and he's also a debuffer unit so i'm not really i mean after seeing the the tontadas i'm not really that in like enticed with uh with what frankie's going to provide but frankie is a dex powerhouse free spirit with a average captain uh 50 times attack and dex damage all enemies and you get a 1.75 slot boost okay whatever just stock standard stuff he does have the two defense potential abilities so easier to rainbow so he's also a debuffer let's have a look 35 second ct okay no, already not looking too good targets enemies within a large range for damage over time level 3 for 44 seconds quick type enemies will get level 2 defense down for 24 seconds and speed down level 7 for 24 seconds Okay, um, damage over time is, is the type of uh, debuff in this game that doesn't really get a lot of time to shine because a lot of teams that are running right now are just aiming to kill your opponent as quick as possible as we see with Roger and Odin. A lot of CT reduction and killing the teammates like within the first half of the match. A couple of things about this, this Frankie has a really high CT and his damage over time is level 3 which is better than a lot of other damage over times but still... The thing is, is this is the type of unit that you're going to be using over a long duration of a match. And this is not the way the meta currently is right now. He only targets quick type enemies for his debuffers. So that's also, again, not really that useful right now. Yeah, I just don't see too many situations where this Frankie's going to be a useful unit in Pirate Rumble. Honestly speaking, this character does not look that good. His passive is going to be dex type teammates get level 5 attack up and level 6 speed. That's fine. These rumble units actually have really good passives, but yeah, the, the specials are just not useful, honestly speaking. He does completely avoid special bind once again, but yeah, again, I, I just can't, I, I can't really advise you guys to pull here because the steps don't look that enticing. If you're only looking for pirate rumble units, you have to do five multis for your first guaranteed one. Now, of course, as I said, if you're doing five multis, you're likely going to get additional rumble units along the way. But even still, it's just not that enticing considering you're only realistically going to be pulling here because of the rumble units. And it just doesn't seem that enticing at all. You do have Legend Smoker on the banner. You've got Luffy and Sanji on the banner. So that may be like the draw to this banner. They're trying to get people to pull for the Legends maybe. I don't know, man. This is, does not look like a good Pirate Rumble banner. And, you know, the Kazuna banner, it is what it is. Nothing really too special there in my eyes. It's fine, but um, Sengoku, a little bit of a missed opportunity with his um, special ability and his uh, crewmate effects. But that's going to wrap this one up. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this one. And, yeah, basically speaking, don't really pull on these banners. It doesn't seem that good. Definitely wait until the next batch release or another crazy banner, whenever, whatever is coming out next. We don't really know what's, what's coming next after this, but... These banners don't look good. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. And if you guys did, make sure to leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.